Okay, welcome to another Orbiter Spaceflight Simulator video. And in this video, we're not going to do any flying. As the title would suggest, we're going to talk about how to install Orbiter 2015 Beta on your system. The current revision is uh, revision 9, but these directions should apply, you know, at least up until the final release of Orbiter 2015. Now, I did go through this already back when it was called Orbiter 2014 Beta. So if you've seen that video, this will be very familiar to you. But I decided just to go ahead and do the whole thing over again for Orbiter 2015 Beta. First thing I want to mention is that Orbiter 2015 Beta, it's not tiny. So if you are really tight on disk space, this probably isn't going to be for you. So just uh, either wait till you have more hard drive space or go get another hard drive, whatever. But we're looking at a minimum of about three gigabyte. Uh, it's actually not quite that much, but you want at least that much available for just the very basic installation. And I would actually recommend that you probably have closer to uh, 25 or 30 gigabyte because you're probably going to want the high resolution uh, textures for Florida Cape Canaveral area otherwise it's gonna look kind of uh, kind of gross so and and also if you want to go all out with Orbiter 2015 beta you're going to need several dozen gigabyte of hard drive space so when you make the decision as to where to install Orbiter 2015 Beta, make sure you put it onto a hard drive, onto a partition that's large enough to contain all the files that you're going to need, because you, you will be surprised how large this can get. But if you just want to check out the basics, at the very, very minimum, you're going to need 3 or 4 gigabyte of space. Now, so, so the step one is going to be make a directory somewhere on your computer where Orbiter can reside. That can be on your desktop, it could be on your C drive, your D drive, wherever you want. Just make that directory, call it whatever you want. Uh, but again, just make sure that you have enough space to do that. Let me go ahead and switch camera views here. And what I do have done on my system, uh, basically this is my C colon backslash users backslash David directory. And inside of that, I have a directory that I call Orbiter Everything. Um, and it simply means that this is everything I get for Orbiter, this is where it goes by default. And I keep this directory backed up, actually, I have it backed up twice, to, so double backup. I've made this directory here called Orbiter 2015 Beta, and as you can see, there's nothing in it, it's completely empty. So this is where Orbiter is going to be on my system. Now, it's unfortunate, uh, well, I shouldn't say unfortunate, but at least at present, we can't just download a zip file and unzip the whole thing into the Orbiter 2015 directory like we did with Orbiter 2010. Now, I'm guessing that when it's in its final form, that will be the case. You'll be able to just download a zip file, unzip it, and you're good to go. For now, we can't do that. We need a piece of software in order to download the files. Now, it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, uh, perhaps if you're not a if you, if you if you would consider yourself not a computer person, then this whole process may not be for you. But if you have a little bit of understanding of computer systems, then this is very simple. So you'll want to download an SVN client, and I don't think it matters what SVN client you get. Just get an SVN client. When you do a Google search for SVN client, uh, this Tortoise SVN is the first one that comes up. So this is why I'm using it. So you don't, again, don't worry about this uh, link. I will put it in the uh, description uh, down below so you don't have to try to rem remember it. Go to the downloads and then pick the installer for your system and save it somewhere on your system where you can remember where it's at and then install it. Now, I've already done that, but I'll show you sort of the basics here. So I've got the uh, Tortoise SVN here. You know, if you double click it. Uh, it's going to ask you to go through and install it. Again, I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it again. So just, you know, do the installer however you normally would. Check the different options, advanced features, things like that, so that it doesn't throw icons where you don't want them. But once once that's installed, then you're going to be you're going to be ready to go. Now, you don't need to actually run uh, Tortoise SVN like a normal program. What you'll do instead is go to that location where you said, this is where I want Orbiter to be, and right click on that location, and you'll have two new options. One of them is SVN Checkout, the other is this Tortoise SVN. Click on the uh, SVN Checkout, and it's going to give you these two boxes, basically. they I think they're empty by default, 
um, at the very least it won't have this URL in there. You're going to want to put this in for the URL of the repository. And once again, don't try to memorize it. I will put the link down below so you can just copy and paste it. This looks a lot like a website, but instead of HTTP, we have SVN. And that's what's going to go in there. This uh, second location, this is where you're going to put Orbiter. Basically, you're saying this is where you want your files to go. And I think basically when, when you right-click that directory and do the SVN checkout, I think it populates it with the correct directory. So you probably don't have to actually type anything in there. But if for some reason this is set to C colon backslash by default, uh, make sure that you put in the correct full path to where you're trying to put those files or else you'll end up checking out files and cluttering them in a, in a, in a, in a location on your computer where you don't want them and it's very messy and difficult to clean them up. So do that, then hit OK. And that's going to go out to that repository, download all those download all those files and put them into that directory where you said that you wanted them to go. It won't take very long. The, the basic files here aren't that large. So just give that a minute to be done. Uh, rather, give that a minute to, to do its job and it'll be all complete. Uh, while that's happening, we can also get another set of files that we're going to need. The texture packs that you need don't actually come in the SVN repository. So you're going to have to go to this website, and again, I will include this link in the description. But you'll have to come to this website in order to download the texture files that you need. Now, this website was completely updated just two days after I recorded the installation video, so I'm actually re-recording this section of the video. But the files that you need are going to be located uh, in these three sort of areas. So come to this website, click on Earth, and you'll note there's a drop down here. You don't actually click on the drop down, just click on Earth itself. And you're going to want to get earthlow.zip and earthcloud.zip. Now you do need these, this is required. Even if you plan on installing the high resolution textures later on, you still need these files. So some people might come here and they might click on, or they might see this drop down. They might go down to map tiles and they can see uh, some of these other links and they'll think, well, if I get the complete data set, which is a much larger set of files than I, than I don't need the low resolution stuff. And that is not the case. Even if you decide to get the high resolution uh, data set later on, you still have to have these. So make sure you get these. Um, another note about the high resolution files is that each one of these links is at four gigabytes. So that's a 24 gigabyte download. So it's an enormous amount of stuff to download. And not only do you have to be able to have the storage space to download it, but once you, once it's downloaded, you also have to have enough storage space to unzip it as well. And that's going to take, you know, many, many gigabytes. So the bottom line here, uh, for starters to check things out, get earth low and earth cloud, which are, you know, comparably much smaller. Then you also should probably get uh, moon low. And again, just get that by clicking on moon. You don't come to the drop downs, but just click on moon and download the moon low. And then finally, Mars, same thing, click on Mars, not down here, but on Mars, and you can get the Mars low.zip as well. Okay, so our SVN is done, and you can see when it's done, it'll say completed, and currently we're at revision nine, and if for any reason that didn't finish or something went wrong, just right click the directory again, and you can probably just click on SVN update, and just to make sure that it's all it's all set. And uh, you might want to check that every uh, week or two, just right click and do SVN update and see if any if any files have been updated. Once you have those once you once you have that done, you can't really uh, you can't really use it yet. So don't worry about trying to launch Orbiter at this point. It's not going to work. Go to the location where you downloaded the low textures, the earth low, the moon low and the earth cloud. And now we need to unzip those into this directory. So hopefully you understand that terminology. I'm not unzipping them here into this directory that I'm in now. I'm unzipping them into the other directory. So let's go to earth cloud. I'm going to right click that. And there's a couple things you can do. Windows 7 8 have zip handling built in. But I prefer to use 7-zip 
it's it's faster it, it takes less uh, time so I recommend installing 7-zip if you don't have it uh, just do a Google search for 7-zip download it install it so I'm gonna right click go to 7-zip and I'm gonna go to extract files and then again it's asking me where do I want these files to go notice it says extract to and currently it's saying I'm gonna extract them to this location and that's not what I want I want them to extract to the place where I'm putting all these orbiter files at which is that orbiter 2015 beta directory now hopefully you understand this concept I find sometimes people have for whatever reason they have this they have a hard time understanding how file management works and then when they unzip files they just put everything they just unzip and they think that it's gonna magically go where it needs to go it doesn't work that way you have to tell it you have to tell the computer where the files are going so I'm unzipping them to the beta directory, the orbiter beta. I'm going to let that do its thing. Now I'm going to do the same thing with Earth Low. And while that's going, I can start this. I can go right click on Earth Low, 7-zip, extract files, tell it that I want to go to that location as well, hit OK. And now those two are going, the other one just finished. And then one more time for Moon Low, I'm going to right click Moon Low, go to 7-zip, extract files, tell it that I want to go to the Orbiter 2015 beta directory and hit OK. Now on that website, you will note that there is another file down here for Mars, uh, Mars Low. You may want to grab it, but what I found for some reason at, at present with Orbiter 2015 beta, there's some glitch with uh, the D3D9 client, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. But there's some glitch where the Mars low texture isn't working so I'll leave that up to you if you want to download that you can um, but if not that's okay too once we have the SVN checkout done and we have the earth low the moon low and the earth cloud unzipped into that directory we now have enough stuff that we can actually use orbiter now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run orbiter exe and the first time you run it, it's going to just do a quick sanity check, basically, to make sure everything is all good. And then, if assuming it's happy, it says no problems found, then we can hit Launch Orbiter. Go through the basic uh, graphics stuff here. This will be different for everybody's system, but make sure that your graphical settings are set correctly. So I'm going to go through here, 1920, all the rest of this is good come to scenarios and a, a good scenario to use to check everything out is the quick start scenario now for some reason the the built-in d3 d7 client is very glitchy on my system when I'm recording videos it's fine when I'm not recording videos and it's strange because I never had this problem with the orbiter 2010 but for some reason with orbiter 2015 beta the built-in client causes a lot of flickering only when I'm recording. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Orbiter just to uh, test it to make sure that it's working. But that flashing that you're seeing is a result of this uh, D3, D7 client. But at the very least, I can see that, yes, in fact, Orbiter is installed, it's working, and I've got the Earth textures. See, if I didn't install that earth low and earth cloud then what this would look like right now would just be a big white ball or a big black ball it would, it would there be no detail it would just be a perfect like a snowball basically so that's why we need that earth low and earth cloud now you will note that as i kind of zoom out here i'm looking at uh, cape canaveral area and it looks like garbage you know quite frankly um, and we'll, i'll talk more about that and don't worry about it because this will look fantastic before we're done but by default, it's going to look like trash. So just be aware of that. Now I'm going to get out of here because that irritating flashing. Now, as I mentioned, the flashing comes from the fact that I'm using the built-in D3D7 client. Uh, if that works for you, great. But I have always preferred the D3D9 client because D3D7 or DirectX 7 is just so fantastically old that I can't even imagine that anybody has a computer anymore that isn't capable of running the, the newer D3D9 client. And in fact, even the D3D9 client's really old, but at least it's newer than D3D7. So we're, I'll put this link also in the description down below. So you can come to this website and you can download the D3D9 client 
And this has actually only been available for about not even 48 hours. Um, this is why I haven't been able to make videos up to this point for Orbiter 2015 beta because of all that flickering that I was seeing. It made the it made the video recordings unusable. But now we can get the uh, D3D9 client for Orbiter 2015. And you can see that it's only been available since December 22nd, and I'm recording this video on December 24th. Grab whatever the newest version is at the time of this recording. It's um, it's showing that beta 9, you know, basically showing that this is the newest one and this is the date. But if there's another one that comes out, you know, a few days from now, obviously grab the newest one. Save that somewhere on your system and then extract it into your Orbiter 2015 beta directory. And I actually need to update this because it says 2014. I'll, I need to change that to Orbiter 2015 now. But I've already downloaded it. I have it here on my system. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to 7-zip extract files. And I'm going to say don't extract here, but instead extract to the Orbiter 2015 beta directory. Hit OK. Now all those D3D9 files are here in this directory. Now if I run Orbiter NGEXE, um, it's going to it, it will default to a bunch of settings that don't make sense on my system. And to save a little bit of time, I'm going to copy my orbiter ng.cfg file that I've already set up. And I'm going to paste it into here. So that file right there, it just contains all the settings that make sense on my system just to save time. So I'm going to run orbiter ng.exe. And now you can run through, you know, parameters, set them how you like, visual effects, all that stuff. And now I will show, uh, now I'm going to go ahead and launch that same scenario, the quick start, using the uh, D3D9 client. And oh yeah, I forgot to set the, uh, the, uh, the link there. And now I've got, um, now I've got, you know, Orbiter 2015 beta running and all that flickering is gone. It's still, Cape Canaveral still looks like garbage because that's a texture issue, doesn't have anything to do with the client. So I still need to install better textures in order to make the uh, base look good. But, I, but I've now verified that everything is installed and working to my liking. So I'm going to go ahead and exit there. Something else we can install, if we like, is the sound add-on. It does work. So if you do a Google search for Orbiter Sound, you'll come to Dan Stuff's website and you can go to Downloads and you can download Orbiter Sound. Um, I'm not going to go through that motion here right now, but it does work. I've checked it out. It's fine. Now, in order to make KSC look really good, you're going to come to this link. <laughs> Again, I told you it's not a simple thing. Martin posted this um, texture pack update for the Florida area. And it's, it's, I don't know where this link is at other than here in Orbiter form. So I'll just post this link into the description down below. And you're going to click here and download this file. Just note that this file, the download itself is 2.3 gig in size. And then once you unzip it onto your system, it's going to be much larger. So what I was kind of getting at earlier, was, let's look at the size of this directory so far. So I've got, you know, if I check properties, it's currently at... 2.13 gigs so that's the very basics that i was talking about and you can see that it works it just it doesn't look very good so that's kind of the minimum you know that around, around three gig is kind of the minimum that you need just for those basics but now when we come in and we download this file and add it now we're going to be adding another you know a lot but when you unzip this i think it actually comes out to like 18 gig or something so we're going to be adding like another 18 gig on top of the two gig that's already being used so let me go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to come back to this directory where I've got all that stuff. And I've got this earth high underscore 10 zero eight zip. I'm going to go ahead and right click that seven zip extract files. And I'm going to put that in that orbiter beta directory. Uh, that might take a little bit longer just due to the, due to the size of it. So actually while that's unzipping, I'm going to do something I hate to do, which is to stop the video and then I'll pick it back up when this is done. And I hate doing that because it means I have to edit the video, which I can't stand doing. Okay, welcome back to the video. And you can see that this is now just about done. We're at 96%, 97%. So that one takes a little while, it took uh, three minutes, which is why I decided to cut that out. Now that that's done, we're going to go back to the Orbiter 2015 directory. We'll load things back up and have another look. So you can kind of get that before 
that before and after. Actually, before I do that though, let me take another look at the size. Go to properties here and you can see, okay, it's actually not as big as I thought. For some reason I was thinking it was closer to 20 gig when that was done, but it looks like it's about seven. So it looks like if you want to have those textures plus the high res uh, Cape Canaveral stuff, then you're looking at an eight or nine gigabyte um, requirement in addition to the amount of space that's required to just download and store the stuff to begin with. So let's go ahead and load that and go back to that checklist folder, quick start and hit launch orbiter. And I forgot to create the symbolic links again. If I remember as soon as I exit here, I'll show what that's all about. So uh, F1 to get that external view. And you can see once we, or once I uh, extracted that high res into my orbiter directory, now everything looks a whole lot better. Whether or not you think it looks fantastic, that's, that's up to you, but at least compared to not having it, I think we can all agree that this looks way, way better. As you zoom out, you know, you can see, you know, the roads and uh, just everything, everything has, has more meaning. And as we kind of continue to zoom out, we get a lot of detail and it looks really good in my opinion, uh, you know, at altitude, if you, you can imagine coming back from, from space or flying high over the, uh, the, the coast here, you know, you have, there's just a lot of detail. You can really see, you know, where everything is at. And again, if you compare this to what it looks like when you don't have that high resolution area for Cape Canaveral, you know, it's just, it's a stark, stark difference, night and day difference. Okay, so we, I have that. So let me go ahead and exit out. And the, uh, the, uh, the, the server link stuff that it's talking about, you have to go, I wanna say you go into the video and then go to advanced. This is for D3D9 client, by the way. This doesn't apply for D3D7. Go to video, go to this advanced, and then yeah, you just have to click here, create symbolic links, say yes, and that's done. And now, let's just quickly check that because it doesn't take long to load. If I go back and do the quick start, you'll see that that warning that I was getting down at the bottom about the missing symbolic links, that's now gone, so we are happy. Uh, it turns out also, I've noticed that th this, uh, heads up display or I should say this graphic here if I control H you know to make that go away the reason it looks so kind of whited out is just because of the time of day and because of the orientation of our craft it work uh, this particular scenario starts at 4 p.m. apparently on this date so we it ends up we have a lot of glare on this I was actually a little put off by this when I first loaded this scenario I'm like man that's so opaque that you can't even see where you're going. But then I realized, well, if you just warp time forward and get to a different time of the day, um, it's not a problem. So the only reason that we have such a bad view there when we load that scenario is just because of the sun's position. So I actually think that this scenario should be updated so that it's a few hours earlier or a few hours later just so that people don't have such a bad glare when they initially start it because that's kind of a bad experience. All right, let me exit out of that. And I think that pretty well covers it. Um, again, you, Orbiter Sound does seem to work just fine. So if you want to download that, I guess, actually, I guess we can go through that real quick. Let me go to um, make sure I know where I even have that at on my system. And stuff add-ons here we go so this will be orbiter sound yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and do the orbiter sound install double click that and the way this one works it's not a zip file so you actually just run this executable but it essentially works the same way when the installer comes up just browse and then tell it where you want to install it on your system so for me that's gonna be C colon backslash David backslash uh, orbiter everything which is where I put all my stuff at then this Orbiter 2015 beta, hit OK, hit Install Orbiter Sound, and then you're good to go. And I'm going to say, yeah, go ahead and install or activate the module. I, I tell you one thing I, I really dislike, uh, and, and I love this add-on. Don't get me wrong, it's fantastic. I love Dan's stuff. He's amazing. But I personally can't stand stuff that just automatically puts icons on my desktop without asking me if I want that. No, I don't want it on my desktop. 
and I also don't want it to start websites automatically. It should it should give me those options. Just sorry, just a moment of venting there. So let me exit out of that, and now we'll go back here, run this, make sure that it did. Yeah, it did start that. So uh, so now yeah, we should have sound. When we go into Orbiter. Let's just test that real quick. Orbiter 2015, and actually. Before I completely leave this video, there is, um, and I hate stuff like Welcome. this too, hit the space bar to make that go away, but you can hear now that we have sound. Um, a couple of co uh, points, so if I go to the moon, I'm going to hit control F1, actually I think I, I think there's a sh I think there's a craft on the moon, so I can hit F3, and then just choose the shuttle A and hit apply. Why is I hate sounds like that. All right, that's bothering me. I'm very picky about sounds. So what I was trying to show there is that the the textures for the moon are okay in the D3D9 client, but they're not okay for Mars. And let me just bring up the sound config real quick. Never play MP3s in the background like that. Okay, so let's rerun that and then go back to the checklist, quick start. So the moon low zip file gives you proper texture on the moon. So we'll hit apply there. There are still some issues. I have kind of pointed this out in one of my other videos where it kind of looks almost like there's moon dust covering half the pads. Um, currently it's night, so let me just warp time forward at 100,000. So we can have some lights turned on. Let's see where the sun would be coming up from somewhere over here. And yeah, there you go. So you can see that with the moon low texture, we have um, we have a moon. You know, it looks when you zoom out, you can see the graphics and everything. And when we are zoomed in close, we have a good look at the mountains. But for some strange reason, the Mars, targets, uh, we have a go for which I believe is GL02, if I hit apply there. Mars has nothing. In fact, it even crashed. Oh, actually, I forgot to unzip the Mars low. But anyway, it doesn't matter because even if I do, I already know it doesn't work. If I unzip that Mars low texture into the Orbiter 2015 beta directory for some bizarre reason, in fact, I can do this real quick, it does work in the inline client but does not work in the, in the D3D9 client. And I'll kind of show that here in a second because this will only take, according to this, it's about 30 seconds total. So um, if, if you run into that, it's probably not an issue with your system because it's happened to me and somebody else, at least one other person mentioned this on an Orbiter forum. So don't, don't worry and think that there's something wrong with your particular configuration because it doesn't seem to be the case. So first of all, let me go ahead and load the Orbiter, the, the inline, and we'll go to the checklist folder, quick start, launch Orbiter. Now this will probably flicker really bad. Again, nothing I can do about that. F3, ch choose the GLO2, hit apply. And yeah, you can see that with the inline client, we have Mars, and it actually looks pretty darn good. They must, he must have started, no, okay, it's, th those are the standard tiles. But with, uh, with just the inline client, let me warp time forward a little bit. That's a bit too much. We have, uh, we do have Mars, and you can see it when you zoom out. You know, you can see the red planet. Although I do recall that even with the inline client, you can't see Phobos and Deimos. Let me test that real quick. So I'll go Control F1. Target, Sun, Mars, Phobos, Apply. Yeah. So you can see as I look around, there's Mars. I should be looking at Phobos. And you can't see it. There's nothing there. You can see I'm zoomed in to 16K. I should be, I should be looking right at it, and it's not there. Same thing with Deimos. Hit Apply, and I'm only zoomed, you know, 9, 10 kilometers. I should, it should be right in front of my face, and I can't see it. It's not there. Now, if I bring up the D3D9 client, which I will do now, go to the checklist and quick start, um, we don't get Mars at all. It, it looks kind of like a black hole. 
So let's go F3, we'll choose GLO2, hit apply. Now the textures are there so we don't crash orbiter. But you can see there's just nothing there. And if I warped on forward, because you might be thinking, well, the sun's not up. But now it is, because the sun's shining on the buildings. But again, there's just absolutely nothing there. It's like a big hole in space. So I don't know what's up with that. And the same thing, we still cannot see Deimos. And in fact, Orbiter crashed again. So, so there it is. It's not perfect. But if you want to play around with it, if you want to play around with Orbiter 2015 beta, hopefully now you at least have enough information to go on to get it installed and part partially functional uh, with the issue with Mars notwithstanding hopefully that will get addressed soon but that's going to be it for now hope you uh, liked the video uh, sorry it was a bit longer than I was hoping it would be but it just there's there's a lot involved in getting it set up and working so uh, like the video if you like the video dislike the video if you disliked my video Check for links in the description down below. I'll have a, a, kind of a written outline, a very basic written outline of what, what all you have to download in order to make this work. And I will see you next time. So you don't, again, don't worry about this uh, link. I will put it in the uh, description uh, down below so you don't have to try to re remember it. Go to the downloads and then pick the installer for your system and save it somewhere on your system where you can remember where it's at and then install it. Now, I've already done that, but I'll show you sort of the basics here. So I've got the uh, Tortoise SVN here. You know, if you double click it, uh, it's gonna ask you to go through and install it. Again, I've already done it, so I'm not gonna do it again. So just, you know, do the installer however you normally would. Check the different options, advanced features, things like that, so that it doesn't throw icons where you don't want them. But once, once that's installed, then you're going to be you're going to be ready to go. Now you don't need to actually run uh, Tortoise SVN like a normal program. What you'll do instead is go to that location where you said this is where I want Orbiter to be, and right click on that location, and you'll have two new options. One of them is SVN Checkout, the other is this Tortoise SVN. Click on the uh, SVN Checkout, and it's going to give you these two boxes basically. They, I think they're empty by default. Um, at the very least, it won't have this URL in there. You're going to want to put this in for the URL of the repository. And once again, don't try to memorize it. I will put the link down below so you can just copy and paste it. This looks a lot like a website, but instead of HTTP, we have SVN. And that's what's going to go in there. This uh, second location, this is where you're going to put Orbiter... Basically, you're saying this is where you want your files to go. And I think basically when, when you right click that directory and do the SVN checkout, I think it populates it with the correct directory. So you probably don't have to actually type anything in there. But if for some reason this is set to C colon backslash by default, uh, make sure that you put in the correct full path to where you're trying to put those files or else you'll end up checking out files and cluttering them in a, in a, in a, in a location on your computer where you don't want them and it's very messy and difficult to clean them up. So do that, then hit OK. And that's going to go out to that repository, download all those download all those files and put them into that directory where you said that you wanted them to go. It won't take very long. The, the basic files here aren't that large. So just give that a minute to be done. Uh, rather give okay welcome to another orbiter space flight simulator video and in this video we're not going to do any flying as the title would suggest we're going to talk about how to install orbiter 2015 beta on your system the current revision is uh, revision 9 but these directions should apply you know at least up until the final release of orbiter 2015 now i did go through this already back when it was called orbiter 2014 beta so if you've seen that video, this will be very familiar to you, but I decided just to go ahead and do the whole thing over again for Orbiter 2015 beta. First thing I want to mention is that Orbiter 2015 beta, it's not tiny. So if you are really tight on disk space, this probably isn't going to be for you. So just uh, either wait till you have more hard drive space or go get another hard drive, whatever. But we're looking at a minimum of about three gigabyte uh, it's actually not quite that much but you want at least that much available for just the very basic installation and I would actually recommend 
that you probably have closer to uh, 25 or 30 gigabyte because you're probably going to want the this is everything I get for orbiter this is where it goes by default and I keep this directory backed up actually I have it backed up twice to so double backup I've made this directory here called orbiter 2015 beta and as you can see there's nothing in it it's completely empty so this is where orbiter is going to be on my system now it's unfortunate uh, well, I shouldn't say unfortunate, but at least at present, we can't just download a zip file and unzip the whole thing into the Orbiter 2015 directory like we did with Orbiter 2010. Now, I'm guessing that when it's in its final form, that will be the case. You'll be able to just download a zip file, unzip it, and you're good to go. For now, we can't do that. We need a piece of software in order to download the files. Now, it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, you know, perhaps if you're not a te if you, if you if you would consider yourself not a computer person, then this whole process may not be for you. But if you have a little bit of understanding of computer systems, then this is very simple. So you'll want to download an SVN client, and I don't think it matters what SVN client you get. Just get an SVN client. When you do a Google search for SVN client, uh, this Tortoise SVN is the first one that comes up. So this is why I'm using high resolution. Uh, textures for Florida Cape Canaveral area otherwise it's gonna look kind of uh, kind of gross so and and also if you want to go all out with Orbiter 2015 beta you're going to need several dozen gigabyte of hard drive space so when you make the decision as to where to install Orbiter 2015 beta make sure you put it onto a hard drive onto a partition that's large enough to contain all the files that you're going to need because you're you you will be surprised how large this can get but if you just want to check out the basics at the very very minimum you're going to need three or four gigabyte of space now so so the step one is going to be make a directory somewhere on your computer where orbiter can reside that can be on your desktop it could be on your c drive your d drive wherever you want just make that directory call it whatever you want uh, but again just make sure that you have enough space to do that let me go ahead and switch camera views here. And what I do, have done on my system, uh, basically, this is my C colon backslash users backslash David directory. And inside of that, I have a directory that I call Orbiter Everything. Um, and it simply means that.